All right, so the design process is what we call a systematic problem solving strategy with criteria and constraints uh, that's used to develop many possible solutions to solve or satisfy human needs or wants and to narrow down the possible solutions to one final choice. Okay, um, so basically, you'll notice that it's kind of similar to the scientific method okay so you may be familiar with the scientific method in science class etc um, if you are not um, then we're going to take a look at it together so the word design often used as a generic term to refer to anything made by conscious human effort so basically if something is not natural someone designed it okay and some of the things that people design aren't necessarily what you would think of okay we think of computers we think of electronics things like that someone designed the chair that you're sitting in okay someone came up with a standard height for that particular chair they had to calculate how much weight they wanted the chair to hold they had to decide what materials to make the chair legs and back out of things like that they also had to think about comfort, right? How is the chair going to feel when someone sits in it, okay? Some of you have drink bottles or things to drink on your desk, okay? Someone came up with a design for that, not only visually, but also practically. How many ounces of liquid is it going to hold? Is it going to be um, a cooler type situation, right? Where, you know, stuff might get cold or hot. How is the mouth or the nozzle of the water bottle going to work? Okay. Is it single use? Is it multi-use? So even, you know, things that you don't necessarily think of that might get designed are still designed. So anything that is not natural from your clothes, from your water bottle, from your glasses, to the chair that you sit in, to the buildings that you enter, to your car, bus, whatever, all of those things are designed and they all go through the design process. Okay, scroll down some please. Okay, to the uh, little circle thing. Okay, so the design process serves as a guide and a series of checkpoints for effective problem solving. The design is iterative, okay? Um, we can click on what iterative means, and it says it's a process that repeats a series of steps over and over, okay? So it doesn't end, it's on a continuous loop. That's why they made it as a circle. Designers must evaluate, reflect, redefine, and redesign throughout the process. So we're going to go through the steps, okay? So the first step is to find a problem, right? What are we trying to do? What are we trying to solve or accomplish, right? Okay, it could be I want to um, create a water bottle that keeps drinks cold or hot um, that's better than the competitors, okay? So who says it's a problem? What are the needs and wants of the stakeholders? All right, so stakeholders are anybody who would be affected by a decision. Is the problem worth solving criteria and constraints? Okay. In some cases, the problem is not valid or justifiable, so the designer must define a new problem. So you really want to try to narrow down specifics when you're defining a problem. Okay. Um, and it can be seemingly mundane but can solve something real for a lot of people. So for example, um, somebody decided a long time ago that they wanna have a telephone and an email service and access to the internet and a camera all in one device, right? Okay, came up with a smartphone. That's a pretty first world problem. However, Apple, who first came up with a smartphone, is now a trillion dollar company and 75% of their sales come from just one device, 
Okay, so even if you think a problem might be trivial, right, it can still be a problem. Okay, generate concepts. Once you have generated multiple possible solutions, you need to narrow down your efforts to one or a few paths. Research, okay? We are lucky to live in times when research is really easy, right? You can have the entire internet at your disposal if you understand how to use it, where to go, etc. Brainstorm possible solutions. So here, you just want to throw stuff out, throw out ideas, etc. Sometimes they're good, sometimes, you know, they're not so good, and so on. Okay, step three, develop a solution. So here's one of the things where you kind of go back and forth between, you keeping up okay? Okay, where you kind of go back and forth with different concepts, all right? Create a detailed design solution, justify the path, and if it's found invalid or can't be justified, then you must return to the previous step. Number four, construct, construct and test. Make a prototype. <coughs> okay, a design is great on paper, but you want to be able to see how it actually works in practice, right? We want to build it. We want to see how it does, test it, okay? And then we want to collect data right? We want to make sure that our design solves our problem. So you want to go back to your problem and then say, okay, does the thing that we just built solve our problem, right? Okay, evaluate the solution. You may have to face some tough decisions about the next steps. A lot of times, companies or individuals get really far into designing something, make a prototype, spend millions of dollars and a lot of time and they say well this doesn't work and they have to scrap the thing or they have to go back to the drawing board okay and then lastly you'll present the solution to your client okay so if the client or the person who's paying you um you know says it's okay then you're good and almost right away you want to start looking at and analyzing the next model, okay? All right, so all your work related to the design process should be carefully documented in your engineering notebook. So you'll have a design brief, decision matrix, graphical model, um, all of those kinds of things, okay? So that's the design process that we are gonna be working through to build the beanbag launcher, all right?